Hi everybody, today we're going to look at how to make flashcards or self-correcting slides in Google Slides. So it's a real nice interactive way to get your children involved, your students involved uh, with a lesson, allows them to work at their own pace, etc. So today we're going to start, we're going to go to New, Google Slides. And once we are in here, you're going to notice Google Slides gives you the option to choose different themes depending on what you want to do for your specific group or specific assignment. For, the, for this exercise, I'm just going to use the plain white here, and I'm going to go ahead and just name it, let's say, animated flash card 232. All right, and whatever, whatever, EVCI 232. Sounds good. Okay, now, so what we want to do is we want to have our self-correcting slide. So the first thing we want to do is create a new slide, which we do by clicking on this plus. Now here, this is going to depend upon, obviously, your grade level and your certification area. So for me, I was an old social studies teacher, so that's what I'm going to use. So for instance, let's say this could be applied to middle school, even elementary school, all the way up through high school, uh, history, social studies, economics, class, etc. So we get started. What is the capital of Ohio? All right. Now, I want to put my answer. Columbus. Hopefully you all learned that in school. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the text box on the bottom is smaller. So I want to go ahead and I want to shrink it. I usually go on about half right around there. Next thing we want to do is we want to increase the font. So go ahead and pick any font style you would like. That's up to you. 48 is normally pretty good, but sometimes if you want to go 90, 72, 60, depends on the text and how much you have in there. Over here you can change the color. Now what's important to remember, we want to have solid contrast. We want to make sure that our slides are not hard to read. So for instance, we want to avoid, let me go ahead and get this set up here, the 36. We want to make sure we don't use a font, for instance, like this. That's not going to be any good. We want to make sure our students' transparency is real, real easy. That contrast is easy to see. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drop in a dark, dark purple. And we'll leave it at that font. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to coordinate these slides so that they are patterned after each other. So students have a recognition of what is the question, what is the answer, that repetition that makes it nice, clean, and solid for them. So what I want to do next, I want to go ahead, I'm going to insert a line. And you can really put this wherever, that's up to you. But what this does is it creates separation between question and answer. You'll notice up here on the taskbar, I can go ahead, I can change the line color if I would like, I can change the line thickness, that's up to you, whatever you would like to do. And one last thing I'd like to put on this slide, especially if you're teaching elementary students or younger students, you know, the use of bright colors and things of that nature, graphics are really important to cast, uh, catch their attention and keep their attention. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna insert an image onto this slide. Now there are two ways in which you can do this. So the first one is, let's go ahead and click on the slide, insert image. Now, the first one you can do, you can upload directly from your computer if you have one, but what's nice right here in Google, you can go ahead and search the web directly right here uh, for Google Images. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in star. And you can see Google's gonna give you search results, but they're going to be somewhat limited search results. They're not gonna be what you would find, for instance, if you were just searching flat on your browser in Google Images. All right, so you're gonna have somewhat limited selection here. And you know, I'm gonna say, I don't really particularly enjoy any of these ones. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna to go to images and I'm gonna look up a star. You know what, I'm gonna look up a happy star. Why not? All right, happy star, which one do I want? We'll go with this one, why not? It's free, royalty free. So we'll copy the image address, come back over now, go to insert image and this time, we go to URL. Notice the other options here that you have to upload images. URL, we simply paste in our URL. And now we have our image of our star. There we go. Okay, now, the next question or the next thing we wanna do is now go ahead and animate our slides. So we're gonna select the text box and we're gonna select insert animation. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave this in a fade in, no problem. All right, so that's 
assigned that this transition is assigned or excuse me animation is assigned to this text box next thing we're going to go to we're going to go down to columbus i'm going to go ahead actually i'm going to increase this font a little bit bump it up to 48 and we want to make sure again we have the text box highlighted add animation this one i'm going to do a fly in from left sounds good now lastly we want to make sure that we bring in the graphic in this case the clip art the star that we have in the upper right corner we're going to want to make sure that that comes in together with our answer. Animation always helps. So we're going to go ahead and notice again we have the image selected. Click on add animation. We're going to do a fade fly in from the right. But we want to change this from on click to with previous. So now these two are connected, Columbus and the star. We're going to go ahead and hit play to make sure this works. So what is the capital of Ohio, Columbus, and you can see there's our graphic. So now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add four more slides to this. Now the best way to make sure it's real simple for you and cuts down on your time and stress and everything else, you're just going to go to the slide, right click, and you're going to duplicate slide. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. And you can just do three or four slides. That's fine. You get the idea. And what's nice is now your settings, right, your animations and everything are established. You don't have to go in and mess with those. This is great, for instance, if you're doing mathematics, simple math, basic, uh, you know, times tables and things of that nature. So we'll just change this around. Now we'll go, what is the capital of, let's see here, Utah, right? And now oh, Salt Lake City. And we go down the list. What is the capital of, let's see here. Of course, now my mind is drawing a complete blank of, well, Pennsylvania is probably going to be too big. We'll say New York. Albany. And we'll do one more here. What is the capital of Pennsylvania? Why not? And we switch that out to Harrisburg. And now we go through and now we'll test our flashcards. What's capital of Ohio? Columbus, beautiful. What is capital of Utah? Salt Lake City. So you get the idea of how that works. Now, if you want to share this with anybody, if you want people to be able to collaborate, you go to the share option. Name it, go ahead. You can go ahead and just name it. I'll name it that one right there. Now, anyone with the link can view, so you can share this with your students if you would like them to review something at their own pace. This is perfect. You can have students edit, so students can go in, and once this is shared, students can then share it with their peers, whoever is in their group, and they can go in and create questions on their own. So they can actually make their own flashcards and own review game, which is pretty neat when students take ownership of these types of things. They really do enjoy it. Also, you'll notice down here you can simply email the template if this is how you want to do it or the assignment to your students directly from there and again you can control is it viewed can they comment whatever you would like them to do one last option that is nice if you have a presentation like this that you're doing and you want your students to go in and self-review instead of them sending them the actual presentation right because if you send them the presentation like you did here they're going to be able to view it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the link and show you what that looks like. This is what's going to come up on their end. Now, they may or may not have author rights depending on what settings you put. But if you want to avoid that and you don't even want them to see this menu, what's nice is you can go back here and you select File, Publish to the Web, Publish, OK. Now look, you got your a, new, a brand new URL, but instead now when the students click on the URL, they're not going to see the Google Slides presentation like this, all right? It's going to look like this. So now it is a published slides presentation, which is pretty nice. And now it's there for you to use really forever and ever and ever until you decide to change it. And what's nice is at any moment, because this is a published website, it might take a couple minutes to update, all right? But 
you can update this in real time. So you can add questions, delete questions, change questions, change answer types, whatever it is that you want to do. So it's pretty interesting. It's really good uh, for, again, that, that self-paced student learning. You can let them go and really do some review on their own. So hopefully this helps you. There's another video uh, that shows you how to do poll everywhere, insert poll everywhere, make it a more of a interactive uh, class, like a, on a larger scale for your class as well in Google Slides. So thank you for watching this presentation and hopefully this helps you out.